Hi, this video is about uh, leaks on the inside of my house. Um, you can see the leaks occur as a stain on the ceiling. You'll see in the video clips in a couple of spots inside the house. We have some water staining on the sheetrock along the roof line. So I'm going to show you the stains. I'm going to show you where they're located on the outside and talk about what we're going to do about it. Uh, it's winter, it's cold, it's still rainy season, so there's only so much I can do now, but I think um, I'll have to remove a bunch of tiles and clean out those valleys and make sure all those gutters are clean. And if you live in an area where you have leaves, where you have trees, and in fall the leaves are all over your roof, they're going to block your valleys, they're going to block your gutters, and you're going to keep a lot of roofers in business that way. There's a lot of videos on YouTube about cleaning gutters and addressing leak problems. Um, so if you're having those, it's not the end of the world, but it's something that needs to be addressed. Uh, the paper underneath, uh, when they put down your decking or your um, plywood or OSB or whatever material they use, um, if you have a concrete tile roof like mine, then they roll paper, then they put wood battens down and they attach the tiles to the battens and I have several crack tiles. And then where different uh, areas of roof come together, they have a low spot called a valley, and they have sheet metal in the valley. Um, so the rainwater is conducted off the roof towards the valleys, and then ideally down the valley, off the roof and into the gutter. So clogged gutters, enemy number one. Clogged valleys, enemy number two. And we're gonna show um, one of, one of the leaks I have attic access to. So I'm gonna show you where, where the leak's coming in there. And it's not directly below the source of the leak because obviously, because of gravity, uh, water will enter and then find a weak point like a tear in the paper or a hole or um, you know something lower than where the actual leak is occurring and then manifest itself by leaking on your sheetrock. And then next thing you know, you've got a stain on your ceiling. So um, enjoy the next uh, few clips. This is the site of the first leak inside the room. You can see how it coincides with the lower roof connecting to the wall of the house. And it just has appeared in the corner. Now, because water flows downhill, it could be occurring anywhere inside the roof along there. There's another spot right there. So we go take a look outside and see what that looks like. Okay, here we are outside. The stain on the ceiling is directly in line with where this lower roof connects to the main wall of the building, right at the corner of the gutter. So let's go up there and take a look. You can see how the water from the main roof fills this gutter overhead pours out where I put that splash box and then runs down the roof right here to this gutter and I've put a mesh screen on this one to keep the leaves out because we're right underneath a tree and what was happening was so much water was flowing out there it was flowing back uphill underneath the tiles and I think getting between the tiles and the paper and then somehow running down the ceiling joist, which is angled to this point here. If you can imagine the sheetrock underneath the roof on the ceiling of the interior room right at this point is where the stain is. Let's take a look up top. This is the main roof and the gutter that collects the water coming off there. And here's the exit point right where the valley is. You can see the piece of metal sticking out underneath that tile. That piece of metal goes all the way to the eave up there and if there are any leaves or debris inside that channel that can cause the water to back up and leak out the sides past the metal flashing and onto the paper underneath the plywood and inside the house. So we had so much rain the other day it was just gushing from this gutter here so I put this splash block here so that uh, rainwater coming out here would hopefully hit the splash block and be dissipated onto this roof and spread out as it went downhill to the gutter. And in the valley area, 
I'm talking about, excuse the sunlight, it's right here in the gap all the way along where the two pieces of roof meet. You can see the metal in there, or can you? Let me find a better spot. Here it is on this side too. So right along here, underneath these tiles, you have this piece of metal. <clears throat> and if the gaps between the tiles become logged with uh, leaves or debris, you'll have water leaking up under the tiles and down into the roof, down into the ceiling, causing the problem. This stuff here is one example of a gutter guard. This one is hinged. It's clipped on to the gutter from the inside. And the nice thing is you can flip it out of the way if you need to get under there and empty the gutter out. And because this is under a tree, uh, lots of leaves fall here. And uh, the gutter's been traditionally plugged up. And the most common area for it to plug up is that hairpin turn there where the gutter points down and makes almost a right angle turn back towards the wall. Either one of those two turns is liable to get plugged up. And when those turns do get plugged up, I found it almost impossible to clear from the top. So what I've done in a couple of cases is to remove this strap. See that strap is held on with some nails there. And on this gutter there are a couple of them. One near the top, one near the bottom. And if you pull those off, that frees up the gutter and then you can pop it away from the wall, literally take it down and hose it out, flush it out and get your downspout clean so it uh, will flow and get that water off your roof and out of the gutter. And here are the leaks in the downstairs room. Gosh, my house is falling apart. Again, stains on the sheetrock showing water leaking from above. There's a good one. That one occurred last year. Finally figured out what that was. And again, if there's a lesson to be held from all this, it's keep your gutters clean and make sure those metal valleys are scraped out and cleaned out and not full of leaves and debris. Um, if these had gone much further, the sheetrock would be falling in on top of us. I'm gonna take one last look inside the attic above here and show you the scene of the crime from underneath. Okay, here's a look inside the attic. <clears throat> this is what it looked like before I put some plywood down. Uh, if you go stepping around in there, unless you're on the ceiling joist, you're going to fall through the ceiling into the room below and nobody's going to be happy. So with this one from the attic door, I put some plywood down as kind of a walkway all the way across. Uh, so we're going to walk over there and we get situated and I'll show where the water was coming in, dropping onto the ceiling of the room below. So what was happening is water was coming in <clears throat> getting under the tiles and the paper and between these sheets of OSB and then running down this uh, joist here and on top of this sheet of OSB which you can't see and then there's a gap here where one sheet of OSB see protrudes past the other and water was dripping out of there and then straight down <clears throat> onto this spot and uh, underneath this is this, the bigger stain in the ceiling. This I think is the reason why there's a stain on the front room ceiling. The gutters uh, or the uh, flash in there <coughs> is blocked up in the corner with leaves and other debris. So <coughs> once water enters there, instead of flowing down across the flashing and off onto the roof, it's spreading out and getting behind the paper somehow and the plywood and leaking into the ceiling inside. You can see how this little gutter here, I don't know if you can make that out, but that is pretty full of junk in there. Leaves and other debris. I've cleaned it out, it was pretty full, and rainwater would pour back that way, dump onto the roof here, and then pour down the roof, and I'm thinking, in underneath the tiles and cause the problem inside the house. Here's an interesting contrast. You can see the tiles facing the sun 
are dry and they have no moss growing on them. And the tiles on the other side that really don't see the sun have this crap all over them. And in fact some of them even have moss growing and um, as the moss grows it becomes loose, falls off and ends up in the gutters. So as well as the leaf problem, see the side of the roof that's in the sun and the moss growing on the shaded side. Okay those are the views of the uh, inside and the outside and uh, you can see in the last clip I have a gutter guard installed on that one um, gutter um, because there's a tree right over there and that helps a lot to keep leaves out of there. Um, so a bunch of issues with um, gutters being blocked um, and valleys over time, debris accumulates in there, uh, some of your tiles may crack from A walking on them if you have anybody up there doing painting for example or what have you. Um, they can accidentally break some. If you're up there hanging your Christmas lights, same thing can happen and it all contributes to leaks coming in. So um, those gutter guards, I've heard mixed reviews about them. There are professionals installing uh, those gutter guards. I think you have to be careful what type you choose because you don't want it to be so good that all the water from the roof runs over the gutter guard and off onto your patio, your deck, or onto the ground below. So you still need the functionality of the gutter going into the downspout and then the water being conducted away from the house. So you want to do some research if you're going to use those. I like them in that one area where I've placed them because that tree sheds like crazy in fall and uh, I can get up there with a leaf blower and blow off, you know, 95% and it does not go on the gutter. I still have to clean it out once a year though. So there you go, welcome to home ownership. Bye-bye.